Hey everyone, Spence from 45 Drives with another Tuesday Tech Tip. And today we're going to be talking about Proxmox and our Houston UI. Alright, so Proxmox is something you've heard us talk about before in the past, I'm sure. Uh, traditionally, we've been using Proxmox as our open source virtualization platform, um, in particular for our Ceph deployments, uh, using Ceph's RBDs, mounting them into Proxmox, then using those to host VMs. Uh, and that works great, and Proxmox is a, is a fantastic product. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of customers move from you know, traditional hypervisors like VMware and Hyper-V uh, into the more you know, open source and free Proxmox space. Um, Proxmox just plays a lot nicer with a lot of stuff, um, but that's not really what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is another form of virtualization, um, not passing storage over a network, uh, but rather hyperconverged. Uh, so hyperconverged storage, uh, meaning your virtualization platform and your storage is hosted on the same box. Uh, there's a lot of advantages to that. Um, of course, the, the main one is latency. You don't need to worry about a network connection in that infrastructure because um, your storage is directly on the box along with your virtualization stack. Um, of course, some disadvantages, you can't really do a highly available storage system when we're talking hyperconverged, uh, at least not easily. Um, but kind of the, the point of this video is to show off a little demo environment I put together, um, which is our Houston UI uh, on top of Proxmox. So I just want to show that these two platforms play well together. Uh, ultimately, our Houston UI is, is a utility platform for any server application. So I just wanted to show off that it plays really well with Proxmox. They complement each other very well, but also maybe get people thinking about where could Houston UI be used in your environment. Maybe you're not even doing entirely storage, but you like some of the management features of Houston. So we're just going to pop over into my little demo environment here and uh, talk about what I've set up. All right. So as you can see here, we're uh, inside a Houston UI. Um, of one of my test servers here in the lab. And I just kind of wanted to give you a quick overview uh, of what I have going here and what I've set up. Uh, so quick overview, I, I've set up a single ZFS pool, Z pool, uh, called video. It's just a mirror uh, of two disks that I had laying around. Um, so we have all the normal features you'd expect of our Houston UI, so we can do snapshots on that uh, Z pool. We can check the status of all of its disks. Uh, we can get even more in depth by going into the 45 drives disks tab for anyone that has a storynator at home. I'm sure this tab is popular with you and see all the disks in our server and you know, do a lot of um, management. So I can see that these two disks here are the ones I made that video pool out of. Um, we also of course have our typical tools, you know, our file sharing module. So if you weren't just using this for virtualization, you could still make your shares, your Samba shares, your NFS shares. Um, you could use our navigator tool to explore some of your files and uh, you know, kind of manage things in a, in a more UI-based manner. And that's kind of where Houston plays into this whole stack, is Houston is the management interface um, for the server. And then over here, I have my Proxmox environment, which is running on the same server, just on a different port. And then Proxmox will handle all of the virtualization tasks within the server. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just import that pool I created earlier, that CFS pool. So I'll select ZFS as my option. I'll give it a quick name. Let's we'll call it video. And as you can see, the list will be auto-populated out with the Z pool I created in Houston. Because Houston ultimately is just doing you know, typical ZFS commands just through a UI. Um, so Proxmox will automatically pick up any pool that Houston creates. Uh, so it's a, a nice little feature if you don't really like managing Z pools uh, through the command line. You can instead manage them through Houston and then bring them into Proxmox. So I'll just select that video. Uh, pool that we created and I'll add it to my Proxmox. Take a little couple seconds here just to populate out that storage into Proxmox and you can see I now have that available. So I have a nice little 10 terabyte volume here. Um, so I'll just show that you can in fact create a VM on that and that there's no issues um, that arise from this uh, hyperconverged setup where Houston is actually controlling the storage. Uh, so we'll just call it uh, test video server uh, I've given a ISO to this server as well, just the Ubuntu ISO, so we'll select that. System information is fine. Uh, we can add some more disks. I'm actually going to use that Z pool we created to create the disks for this server as well. Give it 64 gigs. Give it a couple cores. And throw some memory at it. And then we'll start up that VM once it populates out here. And there we go. Start. 
So as you can see here, uh, Proxmox does have a lot of useful tools like a built-in web console that you can use kind of like similar to an IPMI or out-of-band management. Uh, so we can see that the Ubuntu ISO is populating up here, um, all created and generated through the Houston UI. Uh, so this is just kind of a, a useful tool really and a useful pairing of two products that we really like. All right, so all of you just saw that Houston and Proxmox are a nice little pairing. You can use a lot of your more management-esque tools in Houston UI uh, to do a lot more of the you know, hardware administration, creating storage, things that you don't really want to do in your virtualization environment. Um, of course, Proxmox is a fantastic tool as well, so it's just a natural pairing. Um, we didn't really cover Proxmox in depth in this video, of course, or even my environment. We just, I just wanted to show it off. Uh, if anyone's interested in knowing more about this setup, how I did it, things along that nature, or maybe a more deep dive into Proxmox, if you'd like to see some of the more ins and outs and all the fiddly tabs within Proxmox, chuck a comment in and we'll see if we can get a video about that. But uh, other than that, I think we're pretty much done, and uh, I'll see you guys next week.